Welcome to this lecture on the lesions of the visual pathways. By the end of the session, you should be able to describe the lesions along the course of the visual pathways. And then based on the information about the deficits in the visual field of a patient, you should be able to localize the lesion anywhere along the course of the visual pathway. I would strongly advise that prior to listening to this lecture on the lesions of visual pathway, you should listen to my previous lecture on the normal anatomy of the visual pathways. Only then you will be able to appreciate the deficits in the visual field of the patient and correlate them with the lesions along the course of the visual pathways. So just to give you a quick recap, uh, we discussed in our previous lecture on the normal anatomy of the visual pathways that the optic nerves, they project outwards and backwards from the back of the eye. We can see the optic nerve over here. These two optic nerves, they cross over in a region which is known as the optic chiasma. Only the nasal fibers cross over here while the temporal fibers, they do not cross. The optic chiasma then continues backwards as the optic tract. Uh, the optic tract contains the temporal fibers from the same side or the ipsilateral lateral side and the nasal fibers of the opposite or the contralateral side because of the crossing. The optic tract then relays the visual information into the lateral geniculate body which is one of the nucleus inside the thalamus. Every information, sensory information is relayed inside the thalamus and so the visual information gets relayed inside the thalamus as well. From here onwards, the optic nerve fibers then spread over to create what is known as the optic radiation. We can see the blue color coded inferior and green color coded superior optic radiations. Inferior optic radiations, they pass through the temporal lobe while the superior optic radiations, they pass through the parietal lobe. The superior optic radiations then uh, go to the upper part of the visual cortex, which is known as the cuneus and the inferior optic radiations shown in blue, they go to the lower part of the visual cortex, which is known as the lingula. Inside the visual cortex, the upper cuneus and the lower lingula are separated from each other by a sulcus which is known as the calcarine sulcus. During the course of this lecture we will constantly resort to this illustration which represents a visual field of both the eyes separately. The visual field for the right eye over here and the visual field for the left eye over here. Each visual field can then be broken down into two halves, a temporal half and a nasal half. Similarly, a nasal half over here and a temporal half over here. Similarly, each visual field can then be broken down into an upper half and a lower half as well. We can see the upper half of the visual field here, lower half here, the upper half over here, and then the lower half over here. Consequently, visual field can then be divided into four different quadrants upper temporal, lower temporal, upper nasal, and lower nasal. Similarly, upper nasal, lower nasal, upper temporal, and lower temporal here for the left visual field. With this information in mind, let's begin learning the lesions of the visual pathway. We will start with the lesion at the optic nerve level. The point B here signifies a lesion at the optic nerve level. The optic nerve contains visual neurons from the temporal retina and the nasal retina of the same eye. Hence, if there is a lesion of the optic nerve, let's say in case of optic neuritis, let's say because of uh, a disease uh, called multiple sclerosis, then what do you think? What kind of a visual deficit would result by a lesion in the right optic nerve over here? Well, since the optic nerve contains temporal and the nasal retinal fibers of the same eye, in this case the right eye, hence all the visual neurons of the right eye are going to get compromised, resulting in total blindness of the right eye a condition known as the right monoocular blindness. So you can see over here that uh, the visual field of the right and the left eye have been uh, color coded over here in blue. Uh, any area which is shaded in red represents a deficit in the visual field. And we can see uh, that the right visual field is totally impaired and hence has been color coded in red. Similarly, a lesion of the left optic nerve over here would result in a condition known as the left monoocular blindness. In this case, there will be a total loss of vision of the left eye. Next, let's talk about the lesion at the level of the optic chiasma. The point C over here signifies a lesion in the optic chiasma. 
Let's presume that we have a patient who has, let's say, an adenoma of the pituitary gland, and it's a macroadenoma. We know from our knowledge of anatomy that the pituitary gland that rests inside the bony cella tersica inside the cranial cavity, and it serves as the antero-inferior relation of the optic chiasma, right? So if you think about it, the optic chiasma is kind of a V-shaped structure, and the optic uh, and the pituitary gland is going to be the antero-inferior relation of that uh, V-shaped structure the optic chiasma and if there's an enlargement of the pituitary gland because of a macroadenoma then it can potentially compress the optic chiasma from below and from the front and this would actually result in compression of the nasal fibers within the optic chiasma while the temporal fibers are going to be spared. What kind of a visual deficit would result by a lesion which affects the nasal fibers inside the optic chiasma? Now since the nasal retinas they get outer halves of the visual field projected onto them. So you can see over here, this is the nasal retina of the right eye, and it has the outer half of the right vision of, of the visual field of the right eye projected onto it. Uh, and similarly, this is the nasal retina of the left eye, and it has the outer half of the visual field of the left eye projected onto it. Therefore, damage to the nasal fibers would result in the deficit in the outer halves of the visual field, a condition which is known as the bitemporal hemianopia. Similarly, a lesion compressing the temporal fibers on either side, such as an aneurysm of the internal carotid artery uh, inside the circle of villus uh, that could actually compress the temporal fibers on either side resulting in binasal hemianopia as you can see here that the inner halves of the visual field they get projected onto the temporal retina and so if the temporal fibers are affected on either side then the nasal visual fields would be compromised and this therefore results in binasal hemianopia although clinically speaking it's a little bit uh, rare to have aneurysm on both sides comp compressing the temporal retinal fibers simultaneously now let's talk about the lesion at the level of the optic tract the point D over here signifies a lesion at the level of the optic tract, in this case the right optic tract. What kind of a visual deficit do you think would result by a lesion in the right optic tract? Well, the right optic tract that receives the temporal fibers from the same or the ipsilateral side, where it, whereas it receives the nasal retinal fibers from the left or the contralateral side. But since the right temporal retina and the left eye's nasal retina gets the left visual field projected onto them, therefore a lesion of the right optic tract would result a def in a deficit in the left halves of the visual field of both the eyes. Hence, a condition termed as the contralateral homonymous hemianopia is going to result. In this case, it will be the left homonymous hemianopia. Similarly, a lesion of the left optic tract would result in a right homonymous hemianopia. You can see that over here, the blue region represents a normal visual field of the right eye and the left eye, and you can see the color-coded or shaded, red-shaded regions over here. The left halves of the visual field have been compromised by a lesion at point D, which is affecting the right optic tract. Therefore, a left homonymous hemianopia can be seen. Now let's talk about the lesion at the level of optic radiations. We're going to start with an example of the inferior optic radiations. Here the point E signifies a lesion in the inferior optic radiations. And so what kind of a visual deficit do you think would result by a lesion at point E affecting the inferior optic radiations? Well, if you look over here, the inferior optic radiations, they carry information from the lower retina and then travel through the temporal lobe to eventually bring that visual information into the visual cortex inside the lingual gyrus of the visual cortex, which lies below the level of the calcarine sulcus. You can see that over here, the inferior optic radiations have been color coded in blue, and you can see that they travel down through the temporal lobe because they're lying down below, and then they enter into this region, the visual cortex. Here, you can see that the blue fibers are passing underneath the green fibers and then they are actually entering into the lingual gyrus of the visual cortex which is below this blue margin. The blue margin basically represents the calcarine sulcus and the lingual gyrus lies below the calcarine sulcus. This is a medial 
view of the of the cerebral cortex and you can see the occipital cortex over here with the calcarine sulcus shown in the middle of the occipital cortex the calcarine sulcus is separating the cuneate gyrus or the cuneus at the top from the lingual gyrus or the lingua lingula down below the inferior optic radiations bring information from the lower retina into the lingual gyrus now the right optic radiations just like the right optic tracts receive information from the temporal retina of the ipsilateral side that is the right temporal retina and the nasal retina from the contralateral side that is the left nasal retina and also we already know that the left visual field that gets projected onto the right temporal retina and the left nasal retina therefore the right optic radiations just like the right optic tract they also carry visual information about the left visual field however since radiations are split into superior and inferior optic radiations therefore the inferior optic radiations will carry information from the lower retina or the upper visual fields therefore a lesion in the right inferior optic radiation such as in case of a patient having a stroke involving the temporal lobe for example that could result in the loss of vision in the contralateral upper quadrants of the visual field a condition which is referred to as the contralateral superior quadrantinopia in this case a left superior quadrantinopia so you can see that over here the visual fields of both the eyes are represented in blue over here and the upper quadrants in the lower visual fields are shaded in red over here so that is the part which is impaired uh, in the visual the visual fields of both the right and the left eye now let's talk about the lesion at the level of superior optic radiations here the point F signifies a lesion in the superior optic radiations. Using the explanation provided earlier, can you figure out what kind of a visual deficit would result by a lesion in the superior optic radiation on the right side over here? Well, the superior optic radiations, they carry visual information from the upper retina and they travel through the parietal lobe and then bring that visual information into the visual cortex above the calcarine sulcus, which means inside the cuneate gyrus, which lies above the calcarine sulcus. Remember, calcarine sulcus inside the occipital cortex was separating the cuneate gyrus at the top from the lingual gyrus down below. Once again, we can see the prosection, uh, the uh, view of the medial view of the prosection of the cerebral cortex, and we can see the occipital lobe over here. The calcarine sulcus can be seen nicely over here, which is separating the cuneate gyrus at the top from the lingual gyrus down below. The superior optic radiations are going to bring in that visual information into the cuneate gyrus at the top over here. You can see that nicely over here as well. The superior optic radiations have been color coded in green, and they can be seen going above the inferior optic radiations which were blue in color and then the green the superior optic radiations are going to pour in that visual information above the calcarine sulcus into the into the upper lip of the calcarine sulcus inside the cuneate gyrus in the visual cortex now as discussed before as well uh, the right optic radiations just like the right optic tract they receive information from the temporal retina of the same side of the ipsilateral side in this case the right temporal retina and the nasal retina of the opposite eye the contralateral side in this case the left nasal retina and we also know that the that the left visual field gets projected onto the right temporal and onto the left nasal retinas therefore for the right optic radiations as discussed before just like the right optic tract also carry visual information about the left visual field however as discussed before as well since the radiations are split into superior and inferior optic radiations therefore the right superior optic radiations they would be carrying information about the upper retina or the lower visual field of the opposite side therefore a lesion of the right superior optic radiation such as in case of a patient having a stroke let's say involving the parietal lobe that would result in the loss of vision in the contralateral lower quadrants of the visual field a condition which is referred to as contralateral inferior quadrantinopia in this case a left inferior quadrantinopia which can be seen over here see these are the visual fields of the right and the left eye shown separately uh, and they are shaded in blue however the red shaded area represents a deficit 
right in the visual field and we can see that because of a lesion of the right optic radiation the right superior optic radiations the left visual fields are compromised however only since only the superior optic radiations are affected therefore the compromise can be seen the visual compromise can be seen only in the lower quadrants of the visual field hence a left inferior quadrante nopia a lesion at point number G over here which would result in which would actually affect all the optic radiations fibers would result in a contralateral homonymous hemianopia just like uh, a lesion which involve uh, the right optic tract at point D over here and so you can see that the left visual uh, fields of the, the left half of the visual field of the right as well as the left eye are affected and consequently resulting in left homonymous hemianopia. Now let's talk about a lesion inside the visual cortex. So what kind of a visual deficit do you think would result by a lesion at point number I over here which is uh, involving the upper lip of the calcarine sulcus which means the cuneate gyrus. In the pro section, we can see the calcarine sulcus in the occipital lobe over here, and the cuneate gyrus can be seen at the top over here above the calcarine sulcus. What kind of a deficit would result by a lesion which is involving the cuneate gyrus over here? Now, since the superior optic radiations they enter into the cuneus, one might expect that a lesion in the cuneus would also result in a similar kind of a visual deficit as we saw in a lesion of the right superior optic radiations, that is a contralateral inferior quadrantinopia. However, there is a slight difference over here though. If you remember, we discussed in our lecture on the normal anatomy of the visual pathways that the the representation of the retina on the visual cortex is such that the central part of the retina which is the macula involving including the fovea as well they, that is represented in the posterior part of the visual cortex whereas the peripheral retina is represented more anteriorly and we also discussed that the central part of the retina in the posterior part of the occipital cortex which has the macula represented on it that has a dual blood supply coming from the posterior cerebral artery as well as the the middle cerebral artery which pops in from the supralateral surface and then you know supplies a little area over here which where the macula is represented hence if the person has a stroke involving the posterior cerebral artery which causes impairment of the functioning of the visual cortex the middle cerebral artery would actually come to the rescue of that macular region and consequently the macular part of the visual cortex would still get speared. Hence, a lesion in the right cuneus because of a stroke in the posterior cerebral artery would actually result in a left inferior quadrantinopia. However, since the macula would be speared, therefore this, would, this condition would be known as left inferior quadrantinopia with macular sparing. Similarly, a lesion involving the lingual gyrus, which is below the level of the calcarine sulcus, would result in a left superior quadrantinopia. However, once again, there would be macular sparing because even though the posterior cerebral artery stroke, which is the most common reason for impairment of the visual cortex over here, that compromises the functioning of the visual cortex. However, the middle cerebral artery, as we discussed, comes for the rescue and the macular region gets spared. And lastly, a lesion which involves the entire visual cortex would result in a contralateral homonymous hemianopia. Now, once again, since a posterior cerebral artery stroke has compromised the functioning of the visual cortex, but middle cerebral artery still comes to the rescue of the macular representation of the retina on the visual cortex, and therefore this would result in a left homonymous hemianopia, but with a macular sparing. So in this lecture, we have discussed various lesions along the entire course of the visual pathways and we've tried to explain the kind of visual deficits which would result in the visual fields of the patient as a result of those lesions. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you benefited from the lecture. If yes, please do like the video and don't forget to subscribe the channel. Bye for now.